Hello. I'm jittery with excitement at being here. I grew up not too far away from this museum, and though at age 16, I returned to my parents' homeland, Chile, I still consider this neighborhood my crib. So it's very special for me to be here to talk to you about something that is of utmost importance, not just for Chile, but for the world. The archipelago of Tierra del Fuego and the peat lands of the southernmost tip of Patagonia are the protagonists of the stories I'm going to tell you today. Stories that are not my own, but that I'm here to represent and give a voice to. Now, when I was putting this presentation together a couple of days ago, I knew that the message was charged with very much power, urgency, but just a few days ago, after I'd already sent through my presentation, a fire broke out in Tierra del Fuego, and its peatlands have begun to burn. So overwhelmed with urgency, I've decided to begin this presentation by acknowledging that I'm not here alone, and the words that are looming behind me, hol, hol, tol, hol, hol, tol, are Shelknam language. The Shelknam ancestors are accompanying me as much as a kin group that I'm part of, a complex social architecture of people, places, animals, and technologies that work to conserve the peatlands. I want to bring them into this room and also for the listeners who are not here so that you get a sense of this rich, biodiverse social architecture. I'm gonna ask us to attend to these voices by closing our eyes. And now we're gonna talk about when the weather turns nice, which was celebrated, obviously, with a bonfire, and we have a bonfire here, and we're gonna dance. So everybody who wants to join the game, come this way. I didn't understand. Okay, okay, now the song. No, no. no. The song. Do we have to hug? At the end, at the end. So we're gonna end up all entangled? Yes, we're all gonna get entangled. Any which way, the, the only thing is that when it's done, the two guys start to spiral around each other. It was dance when the whale calves arrived in the spring at the end of the winter. So the song is a welcome to the whales. Whales in Shetland is Hoshin. When I say peatlands, what do you imagine? Because when I say forest, river, desert, coastline, I assume that you immediately picture one of these ecosystems where you smell them or a memory comes up for you. 
Peatlands were formed thousands of years ago. When the glaciers retreated, they left indentations in the land. These pools started to gather water, both from the melting ice, but also from rain. And eventually, debris began to accumulate. Plant matter, the bodies of animals that tumbled into these wetlands. Layer upon layer of this organic matter, the acidity levels of these pools changed, creating a sort of pickled ecosystem whereby nothing became fully decomposed. This state of being alive but not quite alive is what makes peatlands so rich in carbon. Peatlands cover about 3% of the world's land mass yet they are the carbon sinks of this planet. They store over 500 gigatons of carbon in this anaerobic ecosystem that was populated by sphagnum, the only moss that could handle this acidity. These peatlands that you see behind me are the peatlands of Tierra del Fuego, Caruquinca. This is a place that I am fully dedicated to it's been over 12 years that I founded Ensayos, a collective transdisciplinary research practice that is dedicated to the well-being of Tierra del Fuego, be it either by looking at invasive species, general educational um, misunderstandings around its ecosystems, or other threats uh, like now the fires that are burning these peatlands. Ensayos and Tierra del Fuego are intimately bound up with an area that you see in the map in the dark green, which is the Wildlife Conservation Society's natural reserve called Karukinka. Karukinka. In Shetnam, Karukinka means our land. This land, which is over 300,000 hectares, on the Chilean side of Tierra del Fuego are 70,000 hectares of peatlands. The Shaknam people who lived with and on these peatlands often describe peatlands as ancestors. During a time when the world was but elemental forces that were roaming the earth, meeting each other in a lust and desirous encounters, water, air, wind, um, finally began to settle down, created mountains, created coastlines, and when they reached the southernmost tip of this continent called the Americas or Abiyayala, they, just, they laid to rest and became bodies of wet, mushy, spongy peat, rich in carbon, the substance that makes us all the Shalkam have suffered greatly due to colonization. Their language has been considered an extinct language. But today, you heard some of the voices of Shalkam people. Himani Molina was leading us in dance and song in the rumor that I played for you earlier. Here we are, just weeks ago, learning with and from the peatlands of Tierra del Fuego attempting to figure out how to translate its wants, its calls, its needs, its desire to be conserved. Translation is a very tricky thing when you're talking about human, non-human communication. This is why we take the lead from Himani and some of her ancestral understandings of how this can be done through song. In translation, we also use technologies, instruments, like the ones that appear in this photograph. We use a practice called chayar, which is that you take your instruments and you bless them, but you also ask them to be extensions of your heart, for them to work alongside with you in the intention of translation. Translation from the southernmost tip of South America to the north poses many, many risks and dangers, ones that I know very well. I'm here embodying them in many ways. In our long history um, of colonization, Shetnam people 
their artifacts and their language have been taken from them, displaced and been misinterpreted and even claimed extinct. Therefore, it's always a risk to engage in translation. But we're attempting to do this otherwise by generating complicities amongst bodies, shalknam and non shalknam like you see in this picture, giving each other the room to embody one another in a search for a more just way of communicating the peatlands' urgent need to be conserved. We're creating a device, an aesthetics of custodial ecological action that will take shape at um, the upcoming Venice Biennale in what we call an airship. This airship is a mechanism for conservation where language, song, peatlands, and science all convene to create a sensorium that generates a responsibility because you hear the bog. What you heard earlier was a rumor from Khol Khol Turva Tol. Khol Khol. Repetition is very important in Shaltanam language as it is in most indigenous languages. It is there to insist on value and continuity. And this is what we are doing. This is what I am doing here with you. So take these words and repeat them. Put them in your mouth, move them around your bodies. And if you are so provoked, become part of Khol Khol Tol, because the peatlands that we were going to claim to the world needed to be conserved will now need to be restored due to the fires. This is a very different story than I had thought I would come here to tell you. And voicing these words, I think of the presentation that we just heard, Ursula, describing how the land is this archive of knowledge. Um, and this last slide that I had was also to embody that. Knowledge is within these peat bogs as archives of paleoecological information and culture. Ta da! <laughs> it's important. It's important that we come together. Um,